When my son was six years old, he failed a test, an eye test, not a big deal, right? But I don't like when my sons fail at anything, let alone a vision screening. You see, I'm an optometrist. And I remember going to the mall and picking up this portrait of both my sons and feeling conflicted. On the one hand, they looked so cute. But on the other, I could not believe they both were wearing glasses. They suffer from a very common visual condition called myopia. They need glasses to see at a distance. It's also called nearsightedness. And up to recently, doctors were taught that myopia was primarily due to genetics. But my wife and I did not wear glasses until much later in life. So I remember asking myself, what's going on here? Because I noticed this more in my exam room as well. This led me on a career-long journey that started with a study investigating six and seven-year-old children of Chinese ethnicity. One group lived in Singapore, the other group in Australia. Despite sharing the same genetic makeup, the children in Singapore, 30% of them suffered with myopia compared to only 3% in Australia. The major difference between the two groups was how much time they spent outdoors. And I remember saying, outdoors, what's, what's up with that? And then later on, researchers feel the most prevalent theory is that we need daylight to stop the eye from stretching, which causes myopia. And this is not a problem isolated to East Asia. In the United States, the prevalence of myopia has nearly doubled since the 1970s to 42%. I wonder what's, what has changed, a lot of things. But the sad truth is there are surveys that suggest that our children spend less time outdoors than prison inmates who are mandated to spend two hours a day outside. Makes you wonder who's locked up. The World Health Organization is now calling this a myopia epidemic. They project by the year 2050, half the world will suffer with myopia. The reason this is so critically important, the younger a child develops myopia, the more likely their vision will continue to deteriorate as they age, which makes them so much more susceptible to a potentially blinding complication like a retinal detachment or glaucoma. So in parts of China, where the prevalence of myopia has already skyrocketed, scientists are experimenting with classrooms that optimize the amount of light children are exposed to during the day. And my career is also focused on this epidemic of myopia. I fit children as young as five years old with a contact lens that may help prevent myopia from progressing, since daylight does not have this effect once the deterioration begins. I design a lens that the child puts in their eye before they go to sleep. As they're sleeping, the lens gently reshapes the outer part of their eye. So when they wake up, they remove the lens and their newly shaped cornea allows them to see clearly the entire day without the use of glasses. All the child has to do is put the lens back in every night to maintain the good vision, sort of like a retainer after braces. So you could imagine if I'm at a party and someone asks me, so what do you do for a living? I give them this talk and then they look at me and say, I thought optometrists prescribe glasses, not stop children from wearing them. Today, there are doctors around the world who are certified to perform this technology called orthokeratology. The reason practitioners have to be certified, this is much more complex than a standard contact lens fit. It also doesn't come without risk, like infection. Yet, since this has been FDA approved in 2002, I have fit thousands of children including my two sons. Now there are eye drops and daytime contact lenses, which have been shown to be equally effective in stopping the progression of myopia. The FDA has not approved these contact lenses 
to prevent myopia, only to correct it. But there's really good peer review studies now that demonstrate they can slow down progression upwards of 50%. So I think between doctors and scientists, we are gonna derail these grim projections. But my concern is that this is not the only childhood disease worth preventing. I view all these treatments I've described to you as a Band-Aid, because no classroom, no eye drop, no contact lens will stop a different type of myopia I notice in my exam room, social myopia, which occurs when children replace face-to-face -face interaction with screen time. It's the elephant in the room, guys. When I think back, when looking at that portrait, I now know I was not feeling conflicted. I was feeling guilty. Because I remember when my children were busy indoors, I was working right beside them on my computer. It was convenient for me to have them indoors because I fooled myself into thinking it was safer. And lastly, they didn't buy all those devices by themselves. When children play outside, they receive so much more than daylight. They develop the social skills for happy living, like eye contact and empathy and just human interaction. But we don't know how much screen time is too much, and it probably varies from family to family. So the American Pediatric Association has established guidelines when it comes to screen time. And you can find these, well, online. <laughs> But the most telling recommendation for me is that they recommend no interaction with screens for 18-month-olds or younger. It shows me how habit-forming these devices can be at such an early age. They did make one exception to that recommendation, video chatting. And I'm convinced there was a grandparent on the panel who gave us all a pass. But parents confide in me the reality within their homes. They'll say to me, the school gives my children tablets, and all their homework is online. They'll also tell me they don't want to ostracize their son or daughter by not giving them a smartphone because most of their peers are, own one. And lastly, for the most part, their kids are really good. They don't want to seem like they're punishing them by limiting their screen time. So this is what I learned after practicing for 30 years and examining countless families. You are the guidelines. You set the tone. What is lost when families stare at a device while eating or isolate themselves on their phone during family drives? Yet we're all guilty of this, including myself. So as a healthcare provider, I give you permission to limit your child's screen time and send them outdoors. Our roles may have changed. I remember my mother used to corral me indoors but now we have to just send them outdoors. I remember my fondest memories of a child were outdoors. And from this photograph I located, it seemed like I really aspired to be a speaker back then. <laughs> Some things don't change. So here's my message to you. Listen to your gut when it comes to your child in screen time. When I embraced that technology, orthokeratology, that's what I did. If I had waited for unequivocal proof, I'd still be waiting, and thousands of children, including my two sons, would have suffered. I strongly believe this epidemic of myopia is a symptom of a much broader problem. Yet technology is not going away, nor should it but our lives are out of balance. We need to collectively open our eyes and learn what it takes to raise well-balanced children, physically and emotionally, as our world fills up with technology. I thought I was being a good dad by keeping my kids indoors, ensuring they got good grades, ensuring they were safe. I was wrong. Little did I know the screens they were working on while I was doing the same was possibly robbing them of their eyesight and much more insidiously, perhaps, stealing their joy. Thank you.